What's up, Savage Nation? So, um, today we are going uh, to start day three of at-home learning. Whew, big day, big day. We've been doing this almost all week, but hey, we're getting it done. Um, so remember to write your LO at the top of the page, just like I did, your EQ on the first couple of lines. Um, remember your do now goes on the back of the page. Your do now for today is to define these one, two, three, four terms. Um, look them up on Google and then give me uh, the definition in your own words. Um, and while you guys are doing that, I need to talk to you about submitting pictures of your notes. All right, I need for you guys to submit pictures of your notes. If you do not submit a picture of your completed notes, do now and DOL, I can only give you half of your grade. All right, a lot of you guys are doing the Ed Puzzle video. That's great, but I need to see a picture of your notes. If you are unsure how to submit a picture of your notes, I'm going to also upload a pic. Uh, I'm sorry, upload a video of myself showing you step by step how to upload your notes. Okay, so reference that video once you are done with the Edpuzzle video today so that I can see everyone's completed notes today. All right, um, that is just a must. It has to happen or I will not be able to give you guys the correct grades. So make sure you get that done. All right, so you should be finishing up with your do now. Um, before we move on, I want to show you guys a video of what Spindle Top actually looked like. Okay, so let me bring that up. I heard, sort of heard something kind of bubbling just a little bit and looked down there and here this frothy oil was starting up. It was just breathing like, you know, coming up and sinking back with the gas pressure. And it kept coming up and over the rotary table and each flow a little higher and a little higher and a little higher. This is a day that changes America forever. Finally, it came up with such momentum that it just shot up clear through the top of the derrick. A geyser of crude oil shoots almost 61 meters into the air. The Hamels were hoping for 50 barrels a day. The well would soon be pumping out over 80,000. So that's how quickly the oil would just come up outside of the derrick. It just was crazy. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a better idea of what that looked like. Um, okay, so let's talk about oil and big business. Um, after that oil strike, let me move my face. A lot more people start digging for oil. All right, so the earth looked like this. They have to dig through all these different levels of land in order to get to the oil. So as all of these smaller businesses are, are popping up, um, they're all doing the same thing. And so somebody had the idea, um, this big business company or this big company has the idea that let me instead of paying more of my people to... Um, to work for me, let me instead uh, combine all of these smaller companies, get with them, and we can all profit off of each other. This idea becomes uh, what we now know as vertical integration. All right, a real life example of vertical integration that is currently taking place is with the Coca Cola company. All right, the Coca Cola company doesn't just produce coca-cola it actually has bought several other smaller companies so for instance coca-cola currently owns monster they own fanta they own sprite um they own all of those smaller companies so again this idea of vertical integration is taking these smaller businesses and combining them into one all right so it's this process of combining large companies with smaller ones putting them together um to make everything's a smoother process we're gonna skip that one okay so what happens um, after the spindle top oil strike is that by 1902 17 million barrels of oil have been produced so much oil has been produced that the supply of oil has like 
outnumbered greatly the demand for oil. So whereas before, when they first strike oil, people are willing to pay a good amount of money for it, now they're like, mm, no, I can get it from anywhere, so why am I going to pay high price for it? So we see the boom of the oil industry hit its first bust or break in the cycle um, because, again, the supply outweighed the demand. So the oil companies start struggling to recover from this bust in the cycle. All right. Um, this is basically a picture explaining what supply and demand look like. In order for good prices or a good price point, the supply and demand has to basically meet up. Um, the supply cannot outweigh the demand. If the supply outweighs the demand, there's a boost. There's a bust in the cycle. So I want for you guys in your Ed puzzle. Um, Answer this question. Give me at least two to three sentences. Explain what you think um, about how the bust in this uh, oil industry is going to impact the economy of Texas. Let me know what you think. All right. <clears throat> So, we go through several boom and bust cycles with the oil industry here in Texas. But what you need to know about the oil industry in Texas is that it impacts the whole world. Truly, the entire world is impacted by Texas oil. A whole bunch of cities start to develop. So, the city of Houston is developed, Midland, Tyler, Corpus Christi. All of these places um, are developed around the oil industry. Um, even colleges, all right? The University of Texas, uh, the one in Austin, um, is actually, I mean, they actually have their own oil well. So it's one of the richest colleges in all of Texas and really the entire nation. Um, that's why if you apply to go there, a lot of times they'll be able to give you scholarships because they have the money. They have oil. They have, they're really rich. They have the money. So it's one of the best colleges that you can go to because they offer a lot of money because they have money. Um, during this time of the oil industry at its peak, um, people start looking for other ways they can use the oil. So scientists discover that they can use crude oil to make, um, uh, to make actual like plastics, all right, to make rubber. So that rubber that you have at the bottom of your shoe was probably made by crude, like, but from the chemicals taken from the crude oil. That water bottle that you drink the water out of that plastic came from the chemicals in crude oil. All of these different plastics are developed because of the mixture of chemicals that was found in crude oil. So, I don't know, that's pretty cool. It's kind of wild to think of it like that, right? So we make that discovery of what we can use the crude oil for. Um, and people, their brain starts turning. Their wheels start turning in their brain. They start thinking of more things that they can develop. So, after this cheap fuel source has been discovered, um, it leads to cars, all right? Henry Ford um, creates the first car known as the Ford Model T, all right? And the Model T is developed in 1909. So for the first time, we have cars. And not only does he develop the first car, he develops a way of producing that car quickly, all right, so we go from riding our horses to now driving our cars. And not only are we driving our cars, we're driving our cars down roads for the very first time. Um, and it's just, it's a crazy time. People actually start volunteering um, to build and construct new roads so people can have actual roads to drive their cars on. So before we get too far into it, I want to show you guys a video of uh, the Model T. All right. I think this one's it. Let me make sure. Back in Detroit, Henry Ford wondered how he could bring the price of the Model T down to where everybody could buy it. He figured that the more cars he made and sold, the cheaper he could sell each one. And he went to work on this idea. In those days, each car was built from the frame up on stationary wooden horses. There was a different crew for each car, and the same crew stayed on a car until That's it was crazy, finished. Right? That meant duplication of effort and a lot of time wasted. So they tried moving the men from car to car. 
Each man had a special job to do, and as soon as he finished it, he moved on to the next car and did the same thing there. That was better, but it still took 12 and a half hours to assemble each Model T. That's crazy. Henry Ford watched it for a while, and he had an inspiration. Instead of moving the men past the cars, why not move the cars past the men? So on one hot August morning, they tried it that way. A husky young fella put a rope over his shoulder, and Henry Ford called, let go. And at that very moment, as the workmen began to fasten the parts onto the slowly moving car, the assembly line was born. A tech so not only did Henry Ford create um, the Model T, the Ford Model T, the first car, he also created um, the assembly line. So Henry Ford, a smart man, right? Um, what I want for you guys to do an Ed puzzle. How did the oil boom affect Texas transportation? Um, give me at least two to three sentences. And we're gonna skip that activity for today. Um, hit your summary, all right? Give me at least, not one to two paragraphs, give me at least three to five sentences, okay? I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye.